Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with some beginning lessons. There, I have a lot of people writing me all the time. Can you go back to do some beginning lessons? So we're gonna start that. I'm gonna start a whole series of flowers. We're gonna do some portraits. We're gonna do birds. We're gonna do landscapes. We're gonna do westerns. And we're gonna start from the very beginning. And you can follow along, paint all the different genre, which I do recommend, and uh, learn to paint. Okay, so let's let's get going in. We're going to start each of the lessons though with a little bit of color theory because you need color theory. I always say that there's three parts to a painting that you need to learn. One is the color theory, the other is the, the technique, and the third part is the drawing, the drawing skills. And we're going to work on all of those as we progress through a whole bunch of lessons of painting here together. Okay, let's look down at my palette. First, this is my a multimedia palette. Some of you see me use this. Sometimes I use glass, but this is a multimedia palette. You can get it right from Dick Blick. This is the size I use, which is a 12 by 16. I, and what you want is this multimedia one. You don't want anything coated with wax or anything. It's just, it's, you know, specially coated, smooth, white mixing surface. That's what you need is something like that that's going to allow you to mix this. Now, I also love the Bien Fang. I love this one as well. And you can get it 9 by 12, 12 by 9. So it depends on what's available in your area. And I just take the tube colors and I squirt them out right up on top of it. If you're painting for the entire day, that's that's just enough. You don't need to put out any wet paper towels or any of that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, with a lot of uh, the lessons and stuff that I've been teaching you, we don't want to add water. We want to only add water to our paints in specific times because water causes the paints to dry faster. Inside, this is the Heritage Multimedia Paint. Inside this tube is also what we call uh, glycol, which is a, an extender medium. Causes these acrylics to dry slower. So if you mix them with a lot of water, they're going to dry faster again. So you don't. So we're just going to squirt these out, okay? And what I'm using here is what we call the six color set, okay? And the six color set has basically six colors in it. And, if you, and we're gonna be doing a lot of limited painting with those six colors, because I'm gonna start out that way. If you go over to our website, paintitsimply.com, you'll follow the links that are over in the video description here, to paintitsimply.com. I have over 500 lessons, and a lot of them free, some in books and videos and stuff like that that are painted with just the six color set. Over 500 lessons, landscapes, you name it. Okay, so you have a lot of information that you can draw from these six colors. And if you don't think six colors can paint a lot, remember the photos that you look at when you print something are printed with four color inks. Okay, so you can do a lot. If you can print a photo and love that photo, you should be able to mix those colors, especially with the six color set. Okay, so, Basically what you have when you have a six color set, I picked out a red, a, a, a red, a red violet, a yellow, a blue, a black, and a white. Now I use, in you know, a lot of the lessons that you see here when I'm painting Impressionism, I don't use black. When I'm painting historically, color mixing and stuff, I use black because that's how we can make some very historic colors. For instance, black and, and and yellow make an olive color. Now, how do you know that? Well, when you do limited palette, and this is a uh, limited palette color wheel, that's free. You can download it. We'll have the links for you um, in, in the video description. But you're going to look for the color and then what you mix. And then when you mix those colors together, it's going to tell you. Now, how do you know these? These are a bunch of numbers here. What does that mean, David? Okay, in whenever you see a color name, so like right here, you see Hansi Yellow. Okay, that color name, Hansi Yellow, means nothing. That's a name I gave it. Now, some paint companies use the same color, but what is the same color name? Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. What really means is what this, it's really hard to see because it's really small, but it's a little number right underneath there, and that's called the chemical index name. That is PY74. That is the, um, uh, the actual it is a standard that we use in, you know, as paint companies, as chemists, that is what I've done for a long, long time. That's what we use to talk to each other. Names, Hansi Yellow, you know, that doesn't mean anything, but it's the number, that's the industry standard. So this is Yellow 74, um, you know, this is Red 9. You'll see here red nine. Now the little square that's underneath that we sort of added there is the opacity of it. These are semi-transparents. This white is completely opaque. So that's other things that it tell you here. But uh, this now makes sense here. So our our uh, black is PBK7. Carbon black is PBK7. PY74 
is the yellow, the Hansa yellow. And all you do with this kind of chart is you draw a little line right between there and you'll see I'll go right, when I put between there, I'll go right through the yellow, uh, right through the yellow greens, right through here. So if I take my Hansa yellow and if I take just the tiniest bit of black, I will make a yellow green and I can make it brighter with more yellow here or I can make it more of an olive green here with more black so you can see I can vary the color and so that's going right along this line now if I want to make it more toned so whenever I pull anything into here and we're going to talk a lot about this through the lessons you know so if you don't understand it completely we will get it by the time we get five six lessons down we'll get this but so this tells me I'm into the yellow greens so my, yeah, my yellow and my black will make a yellow green in between. My yellow and my red here will make an orange. So if I rinse this brush out, and got to remember, yellow is not as powerful as a lot of colors, but if I want to make an orange, I just take my yellow and a little bit of red, and I'll make a nice, beautiful orange color right there. And it says so. I draw it right between there. It says I'm going to go through yellow, yellow, orange, and orange. And so you can get different colors here. If I want to make it cooler and a little bit different, I can add a tiny touch over here, which will take it more to a red. And so I'm adding this. So I went this way to have an orange. Now I have that orange, and I'm going to go this way over, and I'm going to cross through the red. So you know what's going to happen to those colors. So... As we use this chart, and again, this is this is for free. We get this with the you know with the six color sets and all that kind of stuff because it tells you what's going to happen when you start to uh, mix some of these colors together, and you can get some really you know pretty pretty colors when you mix stuff together, and uh, it will tell you here whenever you draw a line, okay, and one reason why we have the PV19, the red violet. Why? Because we can't make a really good purple out of the red we have here and blue. If I draw a line right between those right here, you'll see it comes pretty far inside the wheel here. If you go past this line right here, that's when your colors start to get very dirty and toned here. So if I take this blue and you think, oh, I'm going to add the red and I'm going to make a purple color. No, it doesn't make a... It does, the blue is very powerful. It doesn't make a very pretty purple color at all. As a matter of fact, it is a very grayed color. And as you add more red to this, it's going to get worse. It's a very grayed color, grayed purple. Why? Because you're so, the line, if I draw it here, is so far inside the wheel, it's right up in here. It's heading to gray. So it's more of a gray color that you have there. If you want to make a really good purple, and you want the, the violet color and you want it to be out here further, you've got to mix blue and 19. That's why that's there. So if I take this blue and I take this one, this is going to give me a much prettier purple color here, especially a little bit more violet. It's going to give me a much prettier purple color really easy because this line is further out of the wheel it's out past this line especially so when you get way down to here like this line and that nine in here it's going to cross right there you're going to get a real gray color and you're going to get a better purple color coming here so these charts are fantastic and i have some more in-depth videos on the mixing like that using that chart but that's what we're going to kind of look at as we go through and we paint some of these lessons different ways. And we're going to start with the six color set so you can start learning those colors. You learn those colors and then we slowly start adding other colors. And pretty soon as, a, as an artist, you know how to drive and make any color that you want, okay? And we'll have some fun along the way. So this is a six color set. We'll start with that and because we can make a lot of things. So we know how to make a yellow green. If we want to make more of a green, we can take our yellow and our blue. And this will give you a green, and I can make it more yellow green, and uh, I can make it more blue green, just more blue right up here, make this more blue green. So I can make from blue green to a yellow green. And if I want it to tone down, so as you go here, it's going to make it's going to make these brighter greens. If I want it to tone down, I need to pull it into the wheel so I can reach right up here to my to my PR9 or my red violet. So 
I can pick up a little tiny bit of the PR9 over here. This will gray the green down quite a bit. You can see it start to gray down. I can cool it and gray it down with this one too. This one will do it as well. But it does another thing called cools it down and grays it down. Makes a little bit different color. We'll talk a lot about that. You know, I'll introduce it today. We'll talk more about that in other lessons. And after five, six lessons, you'll be able to start to understand it a little bit more, okay? But this chart just tells you a little bit about color mixing and how to do it. And, pra and play with it out here. Now, you can just take a paper towel here and just loosen up the color here and wipe it off so that you don't uh, interfere too much with your your mixing so just squirt your palette you know just squirt your colors out directly here don't put out a lot just put out what you need and you know for that day's painting you can always save them if you have extra at the end you can save it you can put it into uh, you know little caps little containers and stuff like that that have little lids and they'll be fine Okay. Now, also, I have out a container of this with the six color set. This comes. This is extender medium. An extender medium is very, very safe. It's non-toxic. It is a little bit thicker, but it feels really slippery. Okay. And I use that to make my brush slide over the surface. It slows down the drying time of the paint quite a bit. And the other thing is when you put it out in a cap like this and in a cup like this, you can leave this out for years. It's never going to go away. It's not going to evaporate or anything like that. So you can just put it out and leave it and you're fine. Okay. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay. But it is very slippery and I'll use it. You'll see me use it in several paintings and stuff for different ways. And we have some other mediums and stuff that we'll introduce along the way. But right now I want to introduce just water and extender and six colors okay and we're going to start having some fun let's go over here to the board so in today's lesson i'm going to start you out with uh, here onto we're going to do a floral here that is uh as a matter of fact let's see if we can uh, guys if we can use that that uh blow that up a little bit more right in there yeah and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to um paint a, a, a blossom up here or, or a little rosebud right up over here okay and then we're going to do some flowers now i did this one years ago and it's one that i always loosen up my students with when they want to learn how to paint casual i did this one seven years ago and i use this whenever i want somebody to paint more casual just some simple blossoms and uh and we'll use it as an idea some simple blossoms and a rosebud and you know it's it's doesn't have to be perfect. Now, the other thing is you can't copy everything. And as an artist, painting takes practice. Sometimes it can be very frustrating, but it takes practice. And you need to remember that. Practice. I used to I practice, practice, and I still practice today on everything. Okay. So this is an 11 by 14. This is just a regular board. This is just a regular, what we call a hard board. You could use MDF, hardboard, plywood panels. Do not use cardboard or papers. Because that, the we're just going to give this one coat of paint and sand it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. You do not use cardboard or paper because they're very absorptive surfaces. They will pull the moisture right out of your paint very quickly, and it will be a mess. Okay, you will get frustrated. And so I use the same type of board for practicing that I use when I am um, when I'm going to. Uh, uh, you know paint to sell and stuff like that so what i did to make this color here i just it, this is just a light little brownish gray i took yellow black white and a little bit of red and and just made a, a nice gray color just any kind of color that you want in there is all we need to do and we're just going to have some fun today practice some different strokes practice some of the background and do a little contemporary work here okay so i base coated it all with and so I mixed up the color, just base coated it, and then I sanded it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper, and I'm ready to go. I don't put any kind of gessos down or any of that kind of stuff. I use the matte surface because I like how the matte, how the brush glides over the matte surface. Now what I like to do is I put down some colors. I like the greens, I like the browns. Okay, so how do you make, we don't have brown, how, how do you make a brown? Well, and I'm going to put down a little extender here as well. 
So I'm going to take a little standard. This is a three quarter inch brush. I'm going to paint with two brushes today. I'm going to use the three quarter inch brush and I'm going to use a number 10. Now you can use a 10, an eight or a six, any one of those that you want. The size of brush does make a difference. I like to use a 10 because it's a little bit larger. My hand's a little larger. I can handle it really well. When I first started, I used an eight a lot. Now I'm using a 10 a lot. Um, it's a little larger and if I want a 10 to become an 8 I just turn it sideways a little bit and it becomes a little bit more narrow so but I like the wider stroke if you find that uncomfortable you can start narrow and then as you build confidence you can go bigger so as you build confidence go bigger the rule is with a lot of casual painting the larger the brush the easier it is to get a casual look the smaller the brush the more stiff the painting becomes remember that okay all the great masters John Singer, Sarge, and stuff always said paint with as large a brush as you possibly can handle because then the painting is not as stiff. It's less work for you as the artist, and the painting has more power, and it's not as stiff, and it works. And we'll talk all about that as we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of loosen it up and make a brown. Now, beautiful brown comes from a lot of red and a little bit of black. It's about three or four to one, and you'll start to get a nice... And you can control the darkness of it by how much black you add. Now, you can change this really easy with some yellow. You can select because you really become more of an orange. Look at that one there, see? So I've got some more deeper reddish browns and I got some other browns here. Those are pretty colors. I'll add a little extender. Now I add extender not really to keep it as wet, but I love how it makes the paint slide. That's my favorite part about it, is it makes the paint slide. And I'm just gonna slide it here over the surface. It makes, and just like you're scrubbing, I like to put in, if my board's this way, I like to put in a little bit of an angle like this. I push and I lighten the pressure. Just lighten the pressure, let it just lightly scrub over it and see what happens. And then I'll slowly increase the pressure. Maybe pick up a little more paint. Let's push a little bit heavier right in there. Something like that. That's kind of pretty. It's a little different. On the other one that I did over there, I kind of turned my brush and hit it a couple of times just to, you know, this is very contemporary. Hit it a couple of times. Make a, we call these marks. Make a couple of different marks. Take your brush and just hit it and have some fun with it. You could take a paper towel, draw some, you know, pull through. I'm not going to do that. I kind of really like that one, so I'm not going to do that. But let's put in some other colors. Let's go more and add a little black. What's black and, and, and yellow make? That nice olive green. That's a pretty, that's a pretty color with a little bit of that green, that olive green in there, you know? And so I like to put in maybe a little bit of this through, maybe it's emulating when you want to become a casual or an impressionist, like a lot of you ask me, how do I get to there? You do this, you start you know, trying to play around, put in a little more yellow with it, add a few, let a couple of sparks of, I call these sparks, let a couple of sparks of that yellow come out through there. That's kind of pretty. You know, play with it, have some fun. Sometimes, sometimes as you're playing with the background like that, it becomes <laughs> prettier than the painting. And so you're just like, oh, maybe I should do something or just leave that, you know, it just kind of becomes funny, uh, comes, becomes pretty. Now, I made with some of the reds, and I'm thinking about adding a rosebud, something maybe right around here. So we might want to just take a little red with that, and we might want to add just a little spark of the red. That's what I like to do. So I, I, and one of the reasons why we do that is, so if I have up here a little a rosebud, and you know it's kind of a pinkish, reddish rosebud or something like that. I don't isolate the color in just one area. You'll, the viewer will see the color going in other areas. So I will pull it. Now that might be a little bit too strong. So I'll just take my paper towel and pull through that. Take a, boy, that's kind of pretty. I like that. And you know, that's, that's one of those you just might varnish. <laughs> it's just like that. Now I, I think that's all I'm gonna do with that. So I'm gonna just push that brush, rinse it out a little bit and just set that down here onto the side and I'm going to go to my number 10 and basically start some of my painting. So let's put a rosebud right up here. We'll put a little blossom. You can do a little sketching. Now, the, the little blossom, like what I had over on that one that's right over there, that little sample, that little blossom might be good as a, as a kind of a um, nice 
white daisy kind of thing, but we're going to need to gray it, uh, gray it down. We don't want to use pure white. We never paint until with pure white until the end of the painting. So I'm just going to take my white right into some of this right here and gray it down. See, it makes a beautiful gray. What? Because we had reds in here, right? We have blacks and reds and greens. Those are red and green are compliments. So, you know, when you look at your thing, if you're here and here, you're pulling it into the same area of the wheel. So the red pulls it here this way, the green pulls it this way, black and white pulls it all the way here into the center, and you get beautiful grays here. We could add, if you want your gray to lean a little more yellow, you can do that. But those are all make really pretty kind of grays here. And let's just put in the idea. Just So I'm going to visualize the center of the daisy here. I'm going to step back on my brush. Now what this does, especially when you use a long handle brush, is it makes the tip of the brush here softer. And you have actually less control. So for contemporary painting, that's the best. So see, and what I do is I imagine where the center is and I push and pull colors here going in and out of that center there now if you find that that's a little bit too slippery like oh I don't have too much control then we might have added a little bit too much extender in it or if you find that it's too weak it's too thin you might have enough a little bit too much extender in it so what you do is just let that dry a little bit and don't add quite as much the next time Learning to paint is a process of trial and error. You're learning things. You've, and I want you to concentrate on what the feel is on the painting. Everybody's hand is different. Some people have soft hands. Some people paint with hard strokes. I tend to paint with hard strokes. And so if you paint with soft hands, sometimes it's nice to have that paint a little bit more slippery. And if you paint with hard strokes like I do, you want that paint a little bit more dry or not as much so that you, uh, so you get a little bit of resistance as you paint. Everyone's going to be a little different. But let's come up here, take some of this gray, maybe a little bit of the red here. We'll make a soft pink here. And let's just come up here and let's just say we're going to push... A little rosebud. So a little rosebud is more of an oval kind of shape. Not quite a circle, but almost a little oval shape there. Okay. And you can look at this and and for those of you that are membership, I'll put this over into the membership so you can just have some ideas there to, to look with. But let's stay a little bit more red here. And let's just put a little bit more red, which is actually a little bit more pink up at the top up here. So that'll be a good color for that, for this rosebud. Maybe even a little bit more red here. Step way back on your brush. Why do you step back on your brush? Because it keeps the tip of the brush soft and casual. And step way back and just kind of sketch it out a little bit here. Drag it around a little bit. Drag your brush around. Just start to loosen up your strokes. You know, we're all nervous when we paint. And so this starts to help get rid of some of that nervousness there as you just kind of drag it around a little bit. It's painting casual, right? So I kind of like that little rosebud there, right back there. We might just put a another hit of that color, just a hint of it right back down over here. I kind of like that so it travels down through. There's a thousand things that you can do with it. I like that other one over there that had a little bit more of a yellow, a toned yellow. Great way to tone yellow. Tone means to gray it down, basically. Darken it down. See, you can make yellow oxides, raw siennas, those colors, just by adding the brown. So we take that yellow, we just push it right here into the brown. We have a softer kind of a yellow color that we can use right here. Maybe we'll, we'll push a little yellow flower right in, or blossom right here. I'm just going to mix up a little more paint. I love to paint with paint, a lot of paint. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more, keep that nice and loose there. And um, maybe another little mark or two right out here. I'm just looking to carry that yellow. I'm a contemporary painter. I like to move that color around. Let's just drop a little bit of that just so you see that yellow moving through the painting, okay? So, you know, when you look at a painting, you can kind of see, okay, this is a softer version of where we're gonna go, see? And all we gotta do is just build the, build the lights, build the shapes up a little bit more, build the lights up a little bit more. Does that make sense, okay? And 
But again, feel the surface. Now, my surface here is very wet, very slippery. And if it is way too wet and you're fighting it a lot, let it dry up a minute. Just give it a few minutes. Go get something to drink and then come back and let it tack up just a little bit and it becomes easier to paint. What you need to do is learn the feel of the surface, the feel of the paint. Do you like it when it's tacked up a little bit and sticky and grabs? Or do you like it when it's really wet and like an oil and slides around? Mine's really wet like an oil right now, so I have to be careful. I don't always like it like that. I like it to dry up a little bit and uh, be a, become a little bit sticky. That's when I really like it. But you can do it either way. Let's come in and uh, let's add, let's just take our red here and a little red violet right over here. We'll, this will give us a darker, cooler color that we can use maybe to s draw a little bit of the center of this rose. So when you go to do the center, a rosebud's more of an oval, and so I'll just tap the color here, and then I'll lift the pressure off to make it softer. Or you can just wipe your brush a little bit here. I'm always painting with a paper towel, just to wipe my brush, and just kind of go up and around a bit, make that oval shape, and you can see it starts to look like a rosebud. But we should get a little shadow down at the bottom, so let's put a, a mark or two of the shadow right down here. And sometimes I'll leave it as a direct mark like that. Sometimes I just pull through, and you saw me just pull through a little bit like that to create a softer look to it, okay? So I have a shadow side. I'm going to have a light side. I have a bit darker shadow here. Wipe your brush. Kind of small go up this way, okay? And on your first ones, getting that soft look is not easy to do. You've got to learn pressure. So I touch and I lift off. If I'm not getting it, wipe your brush, lift off and just keep dragging up there. And if that doesn't work, you can take your finger and pull through and take some of it off. That also softens it. Now, to draw the edge, let's come back up here towards our grays. I'm just going to lighten up. I have to lighten my gray a little bit more than what I used. So I'll lighten it up a bit. And what I'm going to do is just pull down so you can see a crossing petal like right there. I'm just going to pull down a little crossing petal right like that. And just that edge, there's a small edge like that, pulling it down. Now I don't want to, I don't want to drag all that white that's still on my brush all the way down. So, so it, you can either lighten the pressure of your brush or just wipe it a little bit, take it off, and then pull down light pressure this time light pressure barely touching the surface and you can see you can put a light edge out onto that petal pressure and the consistency of the paint those are things that you've got to concentrate on and when you're a beginner learning how to get back and get that light pressure is really hard but it will come it will come with time you know it's just like driving a car it will come with time okay so i'm just going to pick up let's pick up a little more light white color here and I'm gonna add a bit more. Now again, if you find this difficult to do, let your paint dry up a bit so it doesn't slide quite so much. And then next time, don't use as much extender. Learn that, you need to learn the, the control of the paint. So I kinda of like that, a little lighter in the front. And see, I like this, I call this incorporation of the color. I like how the colors are going through. If I continue, don't what you don't want to do is continue to stroke that. If I continue to work that, those colors will all become one and I lose the rose. I'll lose the shape of the rose. Let's take this, let's just add a little bit of this red, maybe a little bit of this red violet. So it's a light, so you can see right here, it's a lighter pink, okay? And I use this all the time. So here I'm it looks right about the value of a seven. It's darker than an eight. It looks like a seven. It's going to dry down to a six. It always dries one value down. We'll talk about that a lot in other lessons. But I want it a little bit darker than what I used before, which is right up here. So a little bit darker. And I can come back here and add a few little kind of curved petals. Just a few right back in there. Little curved petals. Just to give a little interest to the back side there. Maybe just a touch lighter right in here you can make a little like a little light turned edge or something like that sometimes i like to do that sometimes if i feel like i've ruined or, or lost the, the inside i just take a little dark and i just push it right back out again and that'll make the turn of the row so you can play back and forth there just remember you, you know you, you don't want to it doesn't have to be perfect you know the the curvature here is going to make it look like a rose. It doesn't have to be 
absolutely perfect on this. I might make this little edge here. And what I do, this is what I do. So I'll slide the brush like this. And what that does is that picks up, see that little, it's really hard, see that little tiny corner bead of paint there. And I can use that just to, I'll just roll the brush over on this edge and I'll use that to draw the edge of the petal or anything that I want. Again, that takes practice, but that will come with time. I can lift shadow out or lift a little bit of that out. You can do whatever kind of shape you like. Now, what do you see down in here when you're doing a rosebud? You see a lot of green too, yellow green. And so I might just add a bit of extender here and some of this yellow green. So I might add a little bit of that yellow green down here towards the base of this because that's just a real pretty color in there, see? Real pretty color. So I'll add a little bit. Let's go back to a little red and a little white here. Let's make it um, not quite as light here, which was right up here by an eight. Let's get back down towards our sixes or so. Let's see where we are. Maybe a, maybe a seven or an eight, maybe, but we don't want to go quite as light. But let's just take a look at where I'm at. So I'm up here about an eight, okay? And again, these value scales, the links are over there so you can download them. I cover them with plastic so I can wipe them off from time to time. So I'm right here as an 8. Let's just put a nice, cool little light pink 8 right out here. And I'm just going to pull right down. And I imagine where the stem of that, that little rosebud is going to be. And I just lift off my pressure right there and let that look like it's going to come right out of that green area. Now, if you want to... You know, on this one right here, it has a little bit darker edge to it. If you want to make that darker edge, that's just a little green and a little red violet. And maybe even a little red here. We'll just put that into our brush. And we just hit the edge of that rose just right there. And you put that slightly darker edge. Just use your brush right on the chisel. Just kind of draw it like that. And let those colors there. Sometimes you'll see me in videos pull my finger back and forth. Sometimes you'll see me do this petal light. Sometimes you see me do these petals, uh, you know, dark. So I, I change them quite a bit. It depends on the condition of the light. I'm going to put just a touch more light here. And I like this. See how it slid over some of that dark? And it just kind of drug it there. Don't paint that again. Just let that happen if it happens. Now as we come this side, we'll darken just a bit. Let's just maybe pull this one out this way. Just pull out the idea of a little petal coming out. That's all it needs over there. A little petal coming out. Doesn't need that much. You know, maybe uh, let's put just a bit lighter pink maybe right across. Maybe a, a little one right here. Just the idea here. I, that's what I love to paint. It's just the idea of those colors and those movements there. I don't like to I don't like to sit there and, and do a whole lot. I like the ideas of it. You can come back here and let's just maybe add another little light. See, I'll just, what I do is I kind of push my brush around and sometimes you'll see me use the chisel and just draw it around there, here. There's all kinds of ways. We're gonna see, we're gonna be painting all different kinds of ways. But here, you, what's, what's important on this one is we go from a shadow down on this side, so you can push that there. We go to a shadow, we go to a light. I might want to have a bit more light to it right up here. So I'll pick up a little bit more light and let's just pull this petal down here a little bit lighter. I don't want to lose all that yellow. So I'm going to touch and just lift the pressure, just drag it, let it come like that real soft. And let's let that just kind of fade away like that. I don't have to when you're painting, especially if you're into impressionism like, like I like to do, I don't have to define all that rose. As a matter of fact, it's prettiest if you don't. Let that color modulate. Let it kind of just travel in and out of there, see? And you don't have to have all of these perfect, perfect petals everywhere on your rose. It's not necessary, okay? And it's, you just need an idea of a couple petals and we'll let what happens, happens after that. It's going to look like a little rosebud there, okay? Now we can put the, the uh, septals out here really harsh or we can leave them soft. And I think I'm going to leave them kind of soft. Now in here, this starts to tack up a bit and that's when I like it. I'm just going to come back in here to some of my pinks and my greens, my gray colors. 
and let's come through and uh, let's add another run. This time just touch and lift off here some petals here for what that might be. Now, if it's a little heavy, what I like to do is just push in and out like that, and that'll take, that gives an in and out movement in and out of the center where I'm gonna put that center of the, of the little daisy there. We, you can pick up more yellow, make the petals a little bit more yellow. Try not to stroke it too many times though. We want this, we want these colors to kind of change. And let's put in a, maybe a little bit more yellow, yellow green into that as we come right up over here. Pull those petals out. So, and this is where I think it's pretty as I get some of the colors traveling there. Some of the different looks of those colors traveling. We'll pick up a bit more white as I as I build the petals a bit more. I use more and more of the white, building up the white here, so I can make the petals show up more. And but I'll start to reduce the number of times I stroke the the little the flower here, so that I so I don't lose because the white is very dangerous. It's remember remember here, okay? That white is opaque which means if I use it too much, I'll take out everything that's underneath it. So I've got to be careful. I don't want to stroke too long or too many or I'll lose my whole look of my little flower here. Sometimes I'll touch it, remove one. See, I kind of like that little look there. And I'll play with it just a bit to, with the shapes and stuff here, pulling in and out. Let's add a bit more of that yellow here coming in and out, making a pretty little blossom there. And sometimes I'll just lift the color back out of that center. But I like the, I like that each petal is different, okay? And so, and it's different than the other one that I did over here, see? And it's not quite as opaque as that one. And, you know, I like them, I like them both. So I like this uh, other kind of, one more transparent one. I might want to have a, touch more white onto this one right here. So I'll touch and just stroke it a bit here and catch that movement just a bit and just kind of leave that one. It's kind of a pretty flower. It's got a different, you know, it's got a little different look over there. Let's grab some yellow, tone it down here with a little bit of our brown here, okay? And maybe a touch of white into it so we get kind of a lighter kind of yellow here. And let's just pull in a few little petals here to make this one. And so, you know, if I want to, if I want it, so I pull in, I imagine the center of it right in here. Pull down, start to pull, lift off. And see, when I start to run out of paint, that's when other colors come in here. So part of the learning process, we're learning how, what does the paint feel on the surface? How thick? The other thing we're gonna start thinking about is how much paint you have on your brush. Now, if you load this brush up with lots of paint, you're not gonna get that look as it runs out. I try to, and that's gonna take some practice here. How much paint do I actually put in my brush to make the stroke, to give the look of the flower that I want, and then have it start to fade away? That's gonna take some practice. And every one of us is gonna be different because our hand pressure is different. Does that make sense? I like to do, and if I have to reload when I do every petal, that's fine. Maybe touch a little bit out of the center there. That's kind of a pretty little flower there, okay? And if I want to make one that crosses right across the front there, what I'll do is I'll pick up some yellow, maybe slightly different color, and I'll just use the chisel here, the brush. So this is the chisel, and I'll just pull a chisel line right across the front of the flower there. It makes the petal look like it's coming right up into the front. Now sometimes I'll add a touch more light to that, maybe pull down just a bit here. It makes that turn pedal right there in the front. So I'll touch and just pull lift, touch and lift, touch and lift, touch and lift. And it makes a pretty little little pedal there, okay? And let's put a casual little yellowish white one so you can mix these together too. Let's put a little casual look just real quick little one right in here. Just boom, 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 boom. And so you'll start start right where you want those petals to be because that's when there's the most pain in your brush. 
then lift the pressure, watch your hand on your brush, lift the pressure, and just back here, you're just doing a little bit of sketching with it. And you can pick up maybe a little bit of paint, light pressure, and put in a, a bit more of a idea of the blossom. We can pick up a touch more white, maybe yellow right here, and increase the size of this one right here a bit. Maybe just a touch more onto this one here. And you would just leave that alone. It's a nice little blossom there. You know, you don't need that much. And maybe just a whisper or two right out here. Maybe that's going to be another little blossom. Sometimes I'll take, and when I get way out here, I call them the ghost flowers. I'll just put a whisper or two of the little flowers out. Just And so I just pull in and out, back and forth, and just put a whisper of those colors. And that's all it really needs there, okay? All right. So we have that. Now we got to put in a bit darker of a center in there, okay? So what I'm going to do is maybe that brown. I kind of like that brown color. You can go browns. You can go greens. I'll take a little brown, and I'll whisper a bit of that. Just a corner of my brush here. Just whisper that around right in there. Just whisper that in for the centers there. We might even touch something like that with just a bit of the brown, just to give an idea here. And maybe even a touch of that green. I like the green, a little bit of the green, yellow greens into that center. You could use the yellow and the blue if you want more of a powerful one. But I like a bit of that green showing up sometimes here. It's real pretty that way, okay? And then what I do, what I like to do for the centers is take my brush, flatten it out here. I'll pick up some yellow, tap it through a bit of the brown right here. This is what I call model. Model brush means I'll tap one color into the next, but I won't mix it up real well. I don't want to make another color. I won't mix it up real well. So as I tap around here, as I start to tap around, sometimes it's brown, sometimes it's yellow, and I just start to tap around some of this color into that center there of this flower, right up in here, just a bit of that. So sometimes a brighter yellow comes out, some, and, and sometimes more of a brown. And then I slowly head more, if I'm on the light side, like the light petal here, I'll slowly head more to a little bit more yellow, a little bit more Hansa because that's the light side of the flower there. Okay, sometimes I'll wipe that color off of my brush here and just add a couple of soft little touches, what we call notes. If you play a few notes of softer color, a little more brown in it right down here, just a little soft color right back there. That's kind of pretty. And uh, maybe a little more Hansa you can add if you want to go even lighter, Hansa, model in a little bit of white right here. Go to a clean spot so you get a nice bright yellow and a little bit of white and just lightly tap that into a few areas. That's what I call the sparks of color. And it's the sparks of color that give the, a lot of the interest to a little flower like that. See? Let what happens happen. It's really, you know, it's really fun. But now we have, so we have that. And I don't have a lot of leaves in here. And I really, in a contemporary painting like this, you don't really need a lot of leaves. I could. I could even introduce that nice blue-green or something like that if I want in here. Now, this is a bit bright. This, if I go to introduce this, yellow and the blue, it's really bright here. And I'll show you. It's a really bright color. I might put a couple little notes of that. When I make small strokes like this, sometimes you hear me refer to those as notes. And that's what they, what a lot of the old artists call them. Is they put in little notes of color. You see, so it's nice. It, it's nice right up in here, but I don't want to put any of that out there where I want it to kind of, you know, disappear a bit. So if I want it to kind of disappear, I can reach up. How do you drive this color into the wheel? You drive it with your complement or the opposite color. You gray it with some of those reds. So any of your browns, your browns are beautiful colors into these colors here. And those can make some pretty, and, I, and I'm not going to do perfect leaves. I'm going to do just some ideas, some marks. We call these color marks or color notes. And just going to drag a bit of this out here like this. 
just maybe into like a little oval shape or a couple of little shapes that maybe emulate or what I say just kind of looks like leaves but it's not like leaves so you know there's just different kinds of ways to do it here and you can make some brighter I like I do like this area in here it's very impressionistic but what I would like to have is some stems there but you can make them brighter you can do whatever play around you know it's what I tell all of my students it's a board with a little bit of paint that's all it is and have some fun but what I might want to do is take this color right down in here a little bit, something. So I'll take a bit of red, a bit of red violet, and a little bit of white. Get close to what that color is right there and put a, a mark or a note of it right down. Now see how that color carries down? And I can put just, and this is what artists do, is you're playing that note a little bit more in your song here. Just like that, and I think that'll... And so you can see that color just carries down and through. So I don't need to make perfect leaves or anything. But one of the things I do like to do, what I do, is a lot, is the stems. And I go back to that brown. You can, uh, really good, or you know, red and black, you can add a little green to that. It's real pretty. We call this a tertiary color. And I'm just going to use the chisel. And it's good for you to practice this. Just draw a little bit with that chisel, a few little lines here. Maybe even pick up some of that green here. Th uh, thicken them out a bit here, just like that, okay? And add a few little, so I use the chisel, I just kind of sketch it back and forth here. Add a few little marks. You can even add one coming out a little bit further out this way, like that's just more stems or stuff going on. Sometimes I'll take a bit of this. You'll see me in some lessons and maybe just draw back right in here. This is called negative painting. We'll do a lot of this. Draw back in and soften an edge or put a little more dark or a little more contrast, a little mark of it in some areas of the painting just to draw in a little bit more. But there's a real simplistic look at some real quick little blossoms and stuff like that. And this is a real good one to practice. Those of you that want to become more casual of a painter, more impressionistic of a painter, you know, and so it's a real good one. And it's just a board and a little bit of paint. How much paint did I use? Hardly anything. I put out enough paint there. I probably put out 50 cents worth of paint and I have enough there to paint 10, 15 paintings. It doesn't take very much, you know. And uh, so you don't need to squirt out that much. You could probably cut those piles into just 10% of it and use what I want. You'll find through painting the painted simply lessons, you will use a lot of yellow. And you can see I used a lot of yellow and I use a lot more white. The other colors I use very little of. So if you want to put out a little more yellow, put out a little more white, put little bits of the blues and the reds and stuff, that will help you quite a bit, I think, into your painting. But maybe... Um, Maybe just a couple more marks. You'll see me later on use a brush like this a lot. I love these kinds of marks, holding the brush very flat. When we do landscapes, you're going to see me do this a lot with my brush. And I like those kinds of marks. But this just gives, see that just kind of movement. You're just breaking up. You're just adding just more movement and little colors and stuff. And that's what makes them kind of pretty. Let's get a a little bit more green maybe coming down this way. Now you could put a, a touch more yellow or white or something over there like there's another blossom. But that will come out pretty nice. That'll be a nice quick little painting here. Okay. And uh, you can see that. Take that off. Try yourself another one. Concentrate on the thickness of your painting. Now you'll see here. Now one of the things that makes a difference. Okay. If I add a lot. Let me just show you this. Okay. Now, you see how my colors that I have here aren't mixing up real well. That's because my paint is relatively thick. Now, with a lot of, if you're using a, a brand of acrylic that is what's called a flow acrylic, these techniques won't work with them because they're too thin. See, if I add, and, and they make that thinness by adding water, if I add water to a color, it mixes really well, fast. It mixes very fast because there's not very much tension to it. So every time... 
you touch, it mixes on the surface. If you use a paint that's too thick, heavy bodied on there, then you have a problem as well. They don't mix as fast, okay? And so you can see I can tap into that. If I continue to work it, yes, it will slowly become a color. But see, this is what you're gonna practice as an artist. How do you get this color workage here with that? How many strokes is that gonna take you? Each one of us will be a little different. Like you may take the stroke down and drag that color and get that interest. And you know, maybe two or three strokes and you have the interest that you want in that flower. But if you continue to do it, it will become one color. Or if your colors are too thin, let's just add just a touch of water in my finger, you'll see they mix really fast and it's gone. It blends up. It blends to one color really quick. So as you practice, when you're painting, consistency of that paint is key, guys. We're going to study that a lot and how we put thick paint on thin paint and study all of that. Consistency of the paint. Pressure on your brush. How much paint is going down? How much paint are you using? Start to think about this stuff. Don't just grab paint on your brush and put it onto the board. If something doesn't work, stop back and look. How much paint did I use? Look at your palette. Does If your palette when you look at it, it looks like this, and it's all one color, your paints are too thin, they're mixing too fast, and you're putting all one color on the board, and you're not gonna get the interest. Does that make sense? So consistency of the paint, and how many times you stroke, and how much paint you use is gonna be important. And as we go through these lessons of landscapes, we're gonna do some limited palette portraits, we're gonna do animals, we're gonna do birds, we're gonna do everything and you should paint them all. They're gonna have different brushwork, different things, and as an artist, you need to learn how to drive this, how to control this, how to control that pressure. And the brush you use is different. Bristle brushes, synthetic brushes, camel's hair brushes, this is called the fusion brush, it's a very soft brush, and so the pressure and stuff is gonna make a lot of difference on how it all works, okay? And it's gonna be fun. We're gonna do a journey, we're gonna take all the rest of this year, and I'm gonna paint a lot of these with you. I'll try to do like four, maybe five lessons a week of smaller lessons, and we'll have a lot of fun. Paint with the limited palette, okay? All right, so get that, you can practice that. Practice some of those little, little buds, little things like that. Maybe take that little edge off there. And feel the consistency of the paint. See, this is starting to tack up just a bit, and that's when I really like it, when it starts to get a little sticky and a little stiff here. But we're going to control all of that. It's going to be a lot of fun, okay? All right, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that and that little bell so that when I release one of these lessons, you know that. And I will also be continuing on with some of the other things. we got to do our animal challenge, dog channels and stuff, uh, challenges animal portraits i've been challenged to do that so we're going to do that too as well and don't worry i haven't forgot about the westerns lots to paint okay thanks guys i'll see you on the next one